want to talk to you about righteous authority. Righteous authority. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2, if you have that, say amen. amen. And it says this, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Wow. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. Yeah. It's that simple. And as you look at this verse, think about America, the United States of America. People are groaning. Yeah. Yeah. Think about Baltimore, yeah. the poor people of Baltimore. Think about our school system. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Yeah. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. There is a great groaning in our country, and there is a great groaning in the people of God. There is there is a great groaning within the school system. I, I don't know. I don't. I can't answer for the world, but I know those of us who are believers. There is a great groaning within the hearts of the people of God. Yeah. There is an unsettling. How many of you truly believe that the trumpet of God, the rapture of the church, could happen at any moment? At, 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 at any given time, it could happen. And the reason we are so unsettled, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful uh, to our officials when I say this, but if they're not godly, then they're wicked. Yes. I'm going to say that again, and I'm not going to call names, but if, if they are not godly, then they are wicked. And so when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Yes. But when the wicked man rules, the, the people groan. And so what is happening right now in our country and in, in, in many homes and in the school system is people are groaning. People are agitated. Anybody agitated? People are upset. We look at the world and the truth is it's not just the United States. It's all across the globe. Pick a place and people are groaning. Why, why is it that we hear more groaning today than, than we did in years before? It is because we have seen an increasingly number of wicked people in authority. And let, let, me, let me go ahead and say this for those of you, and I'm not, I'm not getting into politics and stuff, but a lot of them start out in sheep clothing. I, if, if, if I continue, and at some point in time, we as people have to get smart. I'm just going to go ahead and be blunt with you. We have to get, and, and, and it's not educated sense. It's sometimes it's common sense. And the church has got to grow in being able to discern between right and wrong. Between, and, 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 and Lord, Lord, I wasn't planning to preach like this. And the church has got to get to a point that when it comes time for elections, you people that are both strict Democrat and both strict Republicans, you are 100% wrong. 100% wrong. You should be getting on your knees and praying that God would show us who to vote for, showing us that, that who God would want in positions... Because it should not be about Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, and on and on. It should be. And so what we are doing, and Lord, I did not plan to go this route. What we are doing as a church is the last election, more than 50% of the church put in people that believe in things against God. And I'll just leave it at that. And then we wonder why we're in a mess. The reason we are in a mess is because we are electing people based upon what, pub, what party they are in or, or what promise they make, not according to whom they serve. I'm going to say this again because I love it. Joshua declared, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So when righteous people, when good, godly men and women are in authority, people rejoice. Why? Because righteous people have it in their heart to do good yes. by other people. Yes. Yes. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. Why? Because wickedness abounds more and more. Yes. And you can't be happy and rejoice in wickedness. The Lord has put it on my heart to, to, to do a sermon series on one verse. The root of all evil. Grew, uh, greed and the love of money, the root of all evil. So, let me, I wouldn't plan this. This has no, I don't know why I'm carrying my notes. 
Righteous authority. Men and women of God, it is time that we realize who we are in God. It is time that we realize who we are in God when we are at our job, when we are in our homes, when we are mothers and fathers, when we are grandparents. It is time to stop letting wickedness rule. It is time to stop letting wickedness tell us what we can do and what we can't do. We must get to the point, but we can't live in righteous authority until we realize who we are in God. We are sons and daughters of God. We are men and women of God, and we are the righteousness of God, and we should live life as such. But what we are doing, my goodness, I, I have to go this route just for a moment. But what we are doing is we are giving in to popularity. We are giving in to party lines. We are, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Those of us that keep doing this junk, putting people in office so that we can get uh, uh, popularity, so that it's my party and, and this and that, shame on you. I'm standing up right now in righteous authority rebuking you. Telling you that it is not about Democrats. It is not about Republicans. It is about what God wants. It is about the righteousness of God. You need to take your party name and shove it under somewhere. Put it under a rock. Do away with it. And you need to get back to the point where you realize that what we need in our church, what we need in our homes, what we need in our schools, and what we need in the United States is righteous authority. There's four areas that I want you to look at in authority, four of them. The mind, your action, obedience, and geography. I preached, I preached a sermon probably not eight months ago uh, t called Taking Authority, and I was preaching on speaking the word, and I just focused on what you speak, speak, speak in authority. And, and so I was, I was piggybacking that sermon when the Lord gave me this one, but there's so much more to it once you get into it. But there's authority in the mind, there's authority in action, there's authority in obedience, and there's authority in geography. I'm going to prove that to you. You see, in the mind, you have freedom in thought and clarity in decision-making. Anybody in this room willing to say that you have a hard time making decisions? Anybody willing to say, I, I have a hard time, uh, a lot of times, having clarity in my mind? Clarity, being able to think clearly. You see, because what the enemy does is he creates reason and he creates confusion, which is from the enemy, which is of the devil. Because once the enemy can confuse you, you can't make a decision. There's going to have to be a part two. Uh, Lord, I, I, hear, I, hear you, I hear you, Lord, telling my heart that I need to go up to the altar during worship and bow down. Uh, but there's nobody else up there. And so, and then all of a sudden, 16 people go up there, and you're like, well, Lord, I would go up there, but the, 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 the area, the altar I was going to go, somebody already got to that part. That sounds like guilt to me. But you, you need authority in your mind. The Bible says to take every thought into captivity. Preach on, preacher. Tearing down strongholds. Bring every thought. Some of you that have, have and I'm not being mean whenever I say this, you, you're scatterbrained. I'm not trying to be mean when I say that. Take every thought. Corinthians will tell you, take every thought into captivity. Tearing down strongholds. Because your weapons are mighty in God. But you, you can't use weapons whenever you're scattered. Yes. Authority in action, what does that mean? You are justified in action. Authority in action without hindrance. Obedience, and uh, whenever you have authority in action, that means the things that you do. I have authority to preach the way I just preached to you. Mad or not, I have a, that's my action. I'm called to be a watchman. I'm called when God says, get rid of the notes and let me speak through you for a few minutes. I am called to do what God says do. And I stand in righteous authority in the action, but I'm not just uh, being obedient in the authority of the action. I'm also being in a, authority uh, in obedience. Right, right. Obedience is delegated authorization. 
You've been licensed. I'm not talking about you need a piece of paper, but you've been licensed. You've been given permission to perform. When God tells you to go or do, he not only uh, asks you to do an action, he asks you to be obedient. And, and whenever God tells you to do and go, he gives you the authority to stand in righteous authority to go. Make it up in your mind, the clarity of mind that you're going to do the action and you're going to be obedient in it. Amen. Amen. Are you with me so far? But sometimes he takes it a step further than that in the end of the, the, the geography, a sphere or a location in which authority is exercised. Yes. Yes. Sometimes, sometimes authority is in mind. Sometimes authority is in action. Sometimes it's in obedience. But sometimes it has to do with a, 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 a location, a sphere, your house, the schoolhouse, yes. this, this church, yes. your job, uh, your yard. Yes. On your car, wherever it may be, Jesus went into the temple and overturned the tables and said that, that, that my house will not become a house that, that is like a den of thieves, but this house shall be called the house of prayer. He was taking authority in a location, a sphere that was given to him. He took back what was his righteous authority. So it was a location. Are you with me so far? Okay. See if I can get through this. So I've got to have authority, Brother Gary, in my mind. Everybody say, in my mind. I've got to have authority in action. I've got to have authority in obedience. And I've got to have authority in geography. You, you've got to rule your life according to the Word of God. Now remember... Authority is not so that you can have power. Authority is not so that you can be popular. Authority is so that you can be godly. Authority is so that my son, when he tells me that, and I can talk to him on the phone and say a prayer over him, and he just prays that God protect him and keep him from it. My 14-year-old knows to take authority over his mind. And me as a parent, we as parents and grandparents, we better understand how to take authority over their mind as well and speak over them. We've given up. And, 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 and I, I don't know how I'm supposed to say this, but we, we, we in such a controlling society have given up too much control. We've bent over backwards to make everybody happy. Come on now. Some of, some of you, y'all need to jump in on that one. We have bent over backwards to make people happy. Because we have ignorant churches standing across the road, holding up signs, telling everybody that God hates them. How stupid is that? How, how dumb can people be? I'm just, it's a blunt kind of day, man. He... He didn't come for us. He came to seek and to save that, that which was lost. That's who he came for. But, but the people in the world think that we're haters. My righteous authority is not for me to put my thumb down on you. My righteous authority might just be the key to save your life. Okay. You writing this down? Good. Okay. I want you to take your Bible, go to Acts chapter 4. As you're going to Acts chapter 4, I want to tell you, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus had risen from the grave. It's a great chapter. In Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, he said, but you shall have power. Oh, what does power mean? Authority. Acts 1 and 8, you shall have power after what? Come on, Bible studiers. How many of you? You shall have power after? The Holy Ghost has come upon you. Only then will you have power. What do you need? You need the Holy Ghost. For those of you that may not be comfortable with ghosts, uh, you need to be filled with the Spirit of God. The power of God. That's, you're plugged into the power source of heaven. So Acts chapter 1, he said, when you get that Spirit... When you get that anointing, you're going to have power. You're going, that, that's, that pastor is where you get your power from. You see, you don't have it within yourself. Maybe this is why so many people are relinquishing their power 
and their authority because they've lost the Holy Ghost. Because when the church stops preaching Holy Ghost, the church loses power. Because somehow we think we can do it just because we're good people. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you that when you try to do it without Holy Ghost, you're trying to do it without God? Because God is Holy Ghost. God is Spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So in Acts chapter 2... On the day of, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one mind, one accord, in one room. Suddenly there was a sound. The Spirit of God came in, filled them, set up on them. They all began to speak with other tongues. And, 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 and all of a sudden, for the first time, notice this now, Acts chapter 2 was the birth of the third person of the Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Jesus no longer stood among them. Now he lived in them. Are you with me so far? I'm teaching you. So Acts 1, Jesus said, you're going to get it. Acts 2, they got it. Yeah. Acts chapter 3 is when the church actually began to function without the person of Jesus. Acts chapter 3 is where they began to work with the spiritual person of Jesus. Jesus no longer walked with them. Now he was in them and on them and his spirit Filled them. So that was Acts chapter 3. So what happened in Acts chapter 3? They were going into the temple and this, this man is begging. And, and Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. They took him by the hand and the man leaped up. The first, the first healing miracle of the church. Silver and gold. And how could they do that? They could do that because they were now filled You see, because earlier the disciples were trying to cast out devils and stuff, and, and people were like, listen, Jesus I know, yeah, but who are you? And even other times people would ask Jesus, why can't your disciples do this? That's why Jesus said, go, boys, go tarry and wait until you be endued, clothed. What am I trying to say? In order to have righteous authority, you need to be filled with the power and the Holy Ghost of God. You can't get away from it. Can't get away from it. And I'm not, I'm not just only talking about tongues. Don't think, well, he's telling me i got to speak in tongues. That's not all that I'm talking about. It's, it's more than that. That's a great part of it, but it's so much more. than. Okay, man, there's going to be a part two to this. Um, so the disciples now empowered. Now think, now empowered. They didn't have it before. Now they're empowered, Acts chapter 3, because they got it in Acts chapter 2. Now empowered, they're taking back authority that they thought they had lost when Jesus died. What, what do you do? Man, he is messing me up. What do you do when you think that you've lost Jesus? You, 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 you tell everybody, I, I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. You begin to lose your faith. You, you'll go to work and laugh at dirty jokes. When you begin to lose Holy Ghost, you'll begin to do things that you didn't do when you had Holy Ghost. You begin to compromise. There's a spirit of compromise because that, what, you want to preach? She, she said, because somebody else is influencing you now. You give up the influence. So they, they now had the power. They he, the man got healed. Through the ability and the power and the anointing that was on the disciples. Jesus is now in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father, but his spirit. Come on, now those of you that aren't filled with it, but now his spirit is filling them. They are filled with it out of your belly. So here we are. Here we are in Acts chapter 4. I got to get my Bible. Acts chapter 4, verse number 1. Now, as they had spoken to the people, the priest, the captain of the temple, the Sadducees came upon them. Here we go. This is when you go to an amusement park and all of a sudden there's a parade. Came upon them. Being greatly disturbed, 
This, this is the church. This is the world we're in right now. Being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. You know what this means? You're offending us. What are they telling you today? You're offending us. And they laid hands on them, and they put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, their elders, their scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Cephas, John, Alexander, and as many were of the family of the high priest, the religious people were gathered together at Jerusalem, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power? By what power and by what name have you done this? You see, let me say this to you before I keep reading on, and I'm trying to hurry. When there is a notable miracle that cannot be denied, they can't, they can't deny the authority. They want to know where the authority came from, but they can't deny it. They'll still be upset and mad because <laughs> no. mm-hmm. by what power and by what name have you done this? Verse number eight. This is where you guys need to be. Are you ready? Then Peter, comma. What's the next word? You take out the word field, there's no righteous authority. Right, right, right. Then Peter, filled. Everybody say, I'm filled. I'm filled. And if you're not, go to, the, go to the filling station. <laughs> go before God, get what you need. Then Peter, church, this is, this is the absolute key, filled. How can you have righteous authority in God? Be filled with God. Then Peter, Filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, rulers and the people and the elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed, a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, I love when the Lord lets me preach this, whom you crucified, whom God, you crucified him, but God raised him from the dead by him. This man stands before, man, you want to know what righteous authority looks like? Then Peter, being filled with the Holy Ghost, looks at the very people that crucified him and said, let me tell you something, people. The very Jesus that you crucified, but yet you might have thought you killed him, but God raised him from the dead. It's by him and by his name. Righteous authority. This is righteous authority. I love this. I could, I could preach this, this scripture every week. This is the stone which the builders rejected, which was become the chief cornerstone. Now, is there salvation in any other? For there is no other name. No other, no other name. I want every person in this room to understand there is no other name. No other name other than the name of Jesus. Let me, let me say his name out loud. His name is Jesus, and there is no other name. No other name uh, under heaven given among men which we must be saved. Now, when, uh, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they, they, they perceived that, that they were uneducated. That's okay, and, and untrained. That's okay, and they marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. You see, I can be uneducated, but yet powerful as long as I'm with Jesus. I can be untrained, but yet powerful as long as I've been in the presence of Jesus. I, 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 I can, I, listen, as some of the old people would say, I could be dumb as a rock, but you fill me with the Holy Ghost, you got a problem, baby. This is the power of God that will take ignorant men and women who don't know how to read and get them filled with the Holy Ghost and suddenly they start standing up and reading the Word of God. 
Anybody know anybody that's done that? Yeah. When, when, after they met with them, they realized, well, they're uneducated and they're untrained. But boys, we got to recognize. There's not much to recognize about them, but the one thing there is that we got to recognize. They, they, they've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. That's the most important thing to recognize. They, they, they've been with, oh, we got a problem on our hands. <laughs> but they recognize the boldness. Verse 14, and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. When you stand in righteous authority, the world will truly have no argument. They, they may rattle off as a roaring lion. They truly have no argument to the true word of God. So, uh, and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing. But when they commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. Verse 15, what does that mean? They had a committee meeting. They had a committee meeting. All the, high, all the religious leaders that were not filled with the Holy Ghost, they were educated, they were smart, but they didn't have the Holy Ghost. Then in verse 16, saying, well, what shall we do with these men? For indeed, uh, that a noble, a noble miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And, and we can't deny it. We can't deny it. It cannot be denied that a notable miracle has been done. How many of you are a notable miracle? And it can't be denied that you're a miracle. You are a miracle. Can't be denied. Well, but so that it spreads no further. Here's what the enemy wants all of us to do. So that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them. Se sound like what we're going through right now? Turn your TV on. Let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. Even the ignorant, not filled with the Holy Ghost, religious leaders knew that the power was in that name. They, 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 they figured if we, can, if, we can get, if we can get those Christians to stop speaking that name, then the miracles will stop. If they stop speaking, if the teenagers will go to school and be ashamed of Jesus, then the, the righteous authority of Jesus won't be in. They understood that the power was in the name. Why? Because there's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. So they threatened them. They threatened them. Uh, now listen, we don't mind that y'all are Christians, but you can't talk about God in school and you can't pray in school. That's a lie. Yeah. Amen. Every, every kid in this room, every parent in this room, let, let, me, let me educate you just very, very briefly. It is a lie that the enemy has, caught, has, has made the church believe that we can't pray in school. The, the, the law is, is that an administrator can't lead you in that prayer. Every teenager right here and every young person in this room can, can go to school next year. And whenever you sit down at your lunch, you can have prayer service. They cannot do a thing about it. They can't do a thing about it. All right. Well... Don't speak in that name. So they called them and commanded them not to speak, nor teach, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But you see, church, when you tell Holy Ghost people that, <laughs> you see, but I'm going to tell you, Holy Ghost people are respectful. Look, I hear what you're saying. I got you, man. I love you. I'm not, a, I'm not, you know, I'm not, a, you, you don't come against me. I won't come against you, but I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. I'm not going to let the rocks cry out in my place. It's not going to happen. And I'm not, I'm not just going to shut up because you don't like my opinion. I got, I got to throw this in, in here. They, they, they had on, I was watching the news the other day, which I don't really do much anymore. And, and they had invited four people to give opinions on, 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 you know, something that was big on the news lately. And, uh, yeah. and, and so they had four people and one, one lady had a, had a religious view. And, and as soon as she gave her view, all the other people attacked her. Every single one of them attacked her. Uh, 
The world wants to make you think that we need to be quiet because we'll get attacked. But at some point in time, we as believers need to, need to look at the attack, receive the attack, Expect the attack because blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. If you love God, you're going to be persecuted for his name's sake. And, and at some point in time, you just need to say, let it come on, baby. Let it come on. The only reason, the only reason they hate your opinion is your opinion brings conviction. And I loved, I loved what this woman said. It was, it, it, it was, uh, a woman, let me finish it. She said, if you guys don't like my opinion, you didn't have to call me on an opinion show. You didn't have to ask me my opinion. You didn't have to invite me here. But if you're going to invite me here, you got to respect my opinion just like you do their opinion. Because she stood up and she said, God creates you exactly the way that God creates you and you can't turn 65 one day and decide that you want to change everything that God created. Amazing. Verse 29. Now, this is the disciples after they had heard what the religious leaders had to say. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness that we may speak your word. They did not hush. They asked for more boldness, more righteous authority, boldness in God. God, give us a backbone not to be afraid to stand up and preach your word. Come on, somebody. Lord, give me a backbone to not be afraid, not be ashamed, but to stand up. Okay. All right, let me hurry. I'm trying. By stretching out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, and when they had prayed, uh, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all, they were all filled. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They were already filled. See, I'm, I'm messing some of you people up right now. You need to come to church more often. Why would people that were filled in chapter 2 be filled again in chapter 4? Because you keep... The book of Ephesians says be filled and refilled and refilled and refilled. How many of you know that just because you're close to God today doesn't mean in six weeks that you're in the same place? Some, sometimes you need to be refilled and refilled and refilled. And when they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and the word of God they spoke with boldness. I mean, I'm so lost right now. Now the multitude of those who believed were of what? One heart, one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of, of, of things that he possessed was his own, but they all had all things in common and with great power. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not about you and me. This is all about Jesus. Righteous authority is all about Jesus. It's not about if you get into it and you ever think how great you are, sit down, be quiet, let somebody else do it. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. Let, let me let me let me let me do my best to finish this. God has messed me up today. I hope that you've been messed up just a little bit by the word of God, challenged by the word of God. Stop stop being intimidated by every every devil that rears his head up. Man, I, I tell you, stop tucking your tail and running every time a devil barks at you. Stand up in the authority that God has given you. Be the men and women of God that God's called you to be. At some point in time, the church has got to stand up and, and stop hating people. But go, go out. Listen. Uh, uh, let. Come on. Authority. Peter had authority in mind, action, obedience. 
Noah had righteous authority in building the ark. He had authority. Right. Notice this now. Moses proclaimed God's command with authority. Let my people go. Joshua used authority in a silent march yes. and a loud shout. Right. David had righteous authority when he went to Goliath and said, you come to me with spears and with swords, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Righteous authority. Yeah. What did he do? What did he said, I come to you in what? The name of the Lord. Oh, my goodness. The three Hebrew boys, now notice this. The three, I, I'm trying to hurry. The three Hebrew boys used silent, silent authority, but it was righteous, and they got their point. What, what do you mean they used si silent authority? They just stood there. Sometimes you don't have to go around saying anything. When everybody else bowed, they stood. And the king said, you can bow or I'll throw you in a furnace. Well, whatever seems right to you, king. Y'all right. know the story. They had righteous authority, and that righteous authority took them into the furnace. And whenever the king looked in, he said, didn't we cast in three? I see four. I see four. And the Bible says they came out and didn't even have the smell of smoke on them. Didn't even smell like smoke. Woo! Man, we're preaching today. Glory to God. Daniel prayed in authority. Come on, moms and dads. Daniel went to his room and he opened up the window and he prayed in authority, even though that the people had told him no more praying. Right, right, right. Jesus continually had to defend his authority. The, the religious people continuously asked, who, who, whose authority are you doing this? Jesus commanded power and authority to his, his followers. Did he not say in Matthew chapter 10, Luke chapter 4, on and on and on, did, did, did he not continuously say that he had given us power and authority to tread on, on, on serpents, to, to cast out devils, to lay hands on the sick, that he has given us power and authority to do those things? Church, if you're a believer in this room, Jesus wants you to have power and authority. But you can't have power and authority until you have Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What does that mean? You can't do it in your flesh. You can't do it in your flesh. All right, Lord, Lord willing, I've got my last point to make. We make no promises. Your authority that is righteous before God because you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, the presence of God, the glory, because you are filled with all that God has, that gives you authority. Whether you stand in authority or not, that's up to you. But if some of you, if you want to get your home back, get, take your authority back. If you want your life back, take your authority back. Marriage, kids, job. You want your church services back? You want your dead church to come alive? Get some righteous authority. Yeah. 